Okay, good morning, um, folks. Uh, good morning to councillors and to uh, staff and to those who are watching. Uh, this is our first meeting of uh, council in 2021, um, a year that we all anticipate and hope will be markedly better than uh, 2020. Um, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. We have three meetings today. For those who may not be aware who are watching, we are beginning with a uh, committee of the whole, um, and then we are going to have a budget uh, committee uh, after that that Councillor Russell will take the chair for, and then we'll go into our regular council meeting uh, after that. That's the order that we will uh, follow. All right, so call the meeting to order, uh, and I'm going to just uh, go through the roll to make sure everybody is here. Councillor Diggle Gammon. Here, present. Happy New Year to you and to fellow councillors. Looking forward to our 2021. Councillor Hensby. Good morning, uh, everybody. And here, uh, where the sun always rises first in Halifax Regional Municipality, the beautiful Eastern Shore. Welcome. Councillor Kent. I think you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you. I'll start that again. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here in 2021. Wishing everyone in District 3 and certainly yourselves and, and the municipality a great uh, and prosperous and safe 2021. So thanks and uh, I'm accounted for. All right. One of the phrases of the year in 2020 was you're on mute. Hopefully we will soon be uh, actually together around a table in person talking about things like human beings. Councillor Purdy, were you able to join us? We'll wait on Councillor Purdy. Councillor Austin? Councillor Austin is not with us either. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm here. I'm having some uh, technical challenges of my own this morning, but um, I, I'm logged in. <laughs> All right. Councillor Mancini. Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year to everybody from beautiful Dartmouth. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Uh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Mason coming from District 7, Halifax South Downtown. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Hello, Mr. Mayor, colleagues. Happy New Year to all calling or virtually from District 8, Halifax Peninsula North. Thank you. Councillor Cleary. Hello. Happy Tuesday. Happy 2021. Happy New Year. Um, any technical difficulties on this end or what IT people usually call a picnic? That's problem in chair, not in computer. Um, welcome, uh, everyone, and happy uh, New Year from District 9, Halifax, West Armdale. Great. Councillor Morris. Good morning, Mr. Mayor and fellow councillors. It's good to be back with all of you again. I'm here in Clayton Park. Awesome. Councillor Cuttle. Good morning, everyone um, and everyone watching online. It's great to be here and Happy New Year from District 11. Awesome. Councillor Stoddard, are you with us this morning? Yes, I am, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to say Happy New Year to Mr. Mayor, councillors and the residents of District 12. Awesome. Councillor Lovelace. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, uh, fellow councillors. Here I am in downtown Hammonds Plains, District 13, Hammonds Plains, St. Margaret's. This is beautiful Susie's Lake behind me, and I'm dreaming of a prosperous, safe and fun 2021 for all of us. Thank you. Right on. Councillor Blackburn. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Happy New Year, one and all. Coming to you live from uh, the GBA, the Greater Beaver Bank area. All right, Councillor Russell. Good morning and Happy New Year to everybody. I just want to uh, make a shout out to Sherry with the Maritime Tartan Company. She put together the ties that uh, Councillor Mancini and I are wearing that have the uh, Harbour Ferries and Tufts Cove on them. And uh, now that this is 21, 21, I hope that all of your postponed wishes come true this year. All right. Some of us just call it the Dartmouth Ferries, but I guess that shows where you come from. Councillor Deputy Mayor Outfit. 
Good morning and Happy New Year to all. And of course, those ties are going to have to be redone when we launch those Bedford and Larry Utec ferries. Uh, and all, you'll all be known as the Greater Bedford Ferry Service then. So, uh, but Happy New Year and, and healthier and, and uh, happier New Year to all uh, those watching and to all our residents. Look forward to today. All right. Councillor Purdy, were you able to join us? Uh, or Corey, does anybody know the status? Not yet? Okay. They're working on Councillor Purdy. Jacques Dubay, do you want to say hello to the new year with us, CAO? Good morning, Mr. Mayor, members of Regional Council, everyone watching. Happy New Year to all. Looking forward to a great year. All right. Uh, our lawyer, Mr. Traves. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, and Happy New Year. Awesome. And I will just ask uh, our clerk if he's also able to say hello for us. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. All right. OK, and I'm Mayor Mike Savage. Good morning, everybody. And as I said, Happy New Year. We'll begin our committee of the whole with approval of the minutes of November 10th. Does somebody want to move those minutes from November the 10th? I will move those minutes. Moved Councilor by Council. Russell. Seconded. I'll second, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Kent, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Those are uh, carried. Calls for a declaration of conflict of interest. We will move on to our item in this committee of the whole. This comes from a discussion on November the 10th of Regional Council which is the review of report re requests. This is the outstanding reports at the beginning of a council term. Um, and it was uh, deferred, I guess actually referred from November 10th. So uh, just in terms of the status of where we are, um, who wants to just from staff, just give us a, a lay of the land on that? I guess, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'll, I'll wait in here in the absence of, uh, of anyone else. The um, what's, what, our, what our process is, is that when council, new council gets elected, we, uh, we ask council, councillors to look at the outstanding report list and see whether there's anything on that list that you feel uh, is either redundant, um, has probably been addressed, uh, et cetera. So, you know, we have reached out to all council members and ask uh, ask you for your input on that list. And uh, we now have that list before you. I think there was an updated list sent by the clerk last evening. I'm not recalling that now put in your package. So, John, do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, um, it just just only that there is a, a motion that arises from the matter that was discussed at regional council that's been referred to the committee. And so we have that as a starting point and um, from the list that's been uh, circulated. If there are additional items that members wish to add to the motion, then then I would suggest amend the motion to add those on and we'll deal with it as a package at the end unless there's some objections. Uh, and so that that list should be your starting point plus the motion that we, that staff's put together. OK, thank you, John. So just to remember, remind councillors that the items that are listed in the motion um, are items that will be taken off uh, uh, the list. So um, Councillor Hensby on a on a uh, Question of what, procedure. Question of procedure and stuff. Yeah, I thought it'd be simpler if we just went through the list, you know, like bill by, you know, clause by clause. Go number one, number two, number, just go down. Is it relevant or not to keep or not? What's the status of it? And if it's if it should go stay or, or, or be deleted. Us having a so-called the hopscotch approach, jumping all over it and trying to figure out we don't need this, we don't need that one. I think it's just a simple, just go down the list. Yes or no, or were the status of it? I know some of these here are similar, like there's some of them are similar to other motions in the report. I think they can be combined if necessary. And some of them are work in progress and some have already been done. So they should come off the list easily. So I thought that it's the easiest approach would just go down the list. Start number one, just go straight, right through. Certainly not a 
not a bad process, Mayor. I would suggest um, if if a member of, of the committee is willing to put the motion on the floor, and then if you wish to run down the list, that's that's one way of going at it. Well, Mr. Mayor, if that's the case, then I'll move that we just go uh, move that we just procedurally just go down the list, starting at number one and go through. If, if, it, stay, if it stays on, staff motion moved first, and then that would that would be our starting point. I don't know that we need a motion for that. I think we can just determine to, to, to proceed that way right. if that's council's wish. I right. would say that we've dealt with this once, and people and council has asked for time to have a look at it. So hopefully, people we're not going to spend a lot of time debating every aspect of every item. There is quite a number of them. So um, if you have an issue, that's fine. But uh, I'll just I'll ask uh, uh, who wants to put the motion itself uh, on the floor, Councillor Cleary. Do I see your hand uh, to put the motion on the floor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, sorry, I'm I'm looking at the agenda. There we go. Uh, okay, so I move that the Committee of the Whole recommend that Halifax Regional Council remove reports numbered one, two B, sixty one, and seventy five from the list of outstanding report requests as set out in attachment one of the staff report dated October twenty six, twenty twenty. Second that. Second it. Uh, okay. Mr. Mayor, I, I do have a question for staff on this because um, so to Councillor Hensby's point, I, we actually did go through that process. This already came to us once. We looked at the list and we were advised to submit reports that we may want to withdraw. So there's over 100 reports on this list. I'm not sure going report by report is going to be very efficient considering we also have a budget meeting today and a council meeting today. Um, so I just have a question for staff based on the um, submissions by councillors as to reports to be removed. How was this final list of only four reports uh, determined? And because uh, I had set, I had submitted a list uh, larger than that, uh, and some of them aren't here. So I'm just wondering if staff could talk about the process of getting these four reports that are in the staff recommendation. So I can, I can speak to that, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor. Those four are the ones that were moved at regional council and then before the matter was referred to this committee. And so we know those ones have already been moved. Uh, it's certainly given that um, what you have in the schedule is all of the reports that have been recommended by various councillors for removal. You could certainly just move that the entirety of them be, that the motion be amended to add the entirety of the list. And then if there's any objections, you can deal with those to take out some if, if people still wish those reports. OK, I appreciate that. Uh, I I had forgotten that we actually did start moving stuff on there and then it was decided that yeah. we would submit a list. Perfect. Thanks, Jim. So, Councilor Clare, do you want to amend your motion then to say that all the other items that have been requested by councillors also be uh, added to the motion? Is that something staff can easily stick up in the chat box there? Because I, I, I will move to amend that uh, all items submitted by councillors be included in this motion. All the items that are on the schedule that was circulated for the for the meeting, yes. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, that's what I was trying to avoid regarding hop, hop skipping and jumping. We'll just go number one and go through it. This is on or off. Point of order, yeah. you don't have the floor. That's right. Yeah, I've got Councillor Mason speaking next. Just in terms of Councillor Cleary's motion, um, or you know, motion. So do we have those? Can we put those in the chat though so that we all understand which ones have been submitted? Yeah, we will pull those numbers in and put them in the chat here momentarily. Okay. I'll second the motion. Councillor Mason. Uh, so uh, I, I was actually going to do exactly what Sean did. Uh, we were all asked to bring uh, motions forward based on our understanding uh, or reports forward for removal based on our understanding of what is needed and not needed in our districts and in the region. I think the list is reasonable. I don't know if staff have any comments. We did have a situation at Transportation Standing Committee where a report that was done was removed by Transportation Standing Committee and is going to come anyway at this point. So there, there is a bit of a syncing this up issue where I do wonder whether or not, uh, you know, uh, staff has parsed the list of uh, proposed uh, reports to remove. And just to be clear, we're talking about, uh, you know, the appendix. I'm having trouble finding it right now, but there's an appendix of what was submitted rather than we haven't put a motion on to remove everything at all, right? That's, that's not what we're talking about. 
Okay. We're talking about adding the ones that councillors have. Uh, okay. the, the four page schedule that was circulated last night of, of the reports that have been submitted by councillors uh, that would be removed from report center. That's that's not to say that if there that this is just removing the requests. If if staff feel, still feels a report needs to come to council on a topic, it will come or if it's already in the works, it will likely still come as well. It'll this just removes the requests. So in that case, I think uh, council needs to uh, have a look as we can while we're discussing at that that uh, list, which I will admit uh, I've only barely skimmed. Uh, but given that if uh, that staff can bring forward necessary motions as staff initiated reports, which is what's going to happen at the Transportation Standing Committee, I, I feel pretty comfortable uh, uh, with uh, uh, what is proposed so far. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. OK, we're waiting for that list to. Uh, I think it's going to go in the chat line, but uh, Councillor Purdy, uh, welcome. Uh, you've joined us now. Did you have a question? I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I apologize for that. I had to shut down and reboot my computer. Um, on the list that was circulated last night, um, there were two uh, motions that I feel are really important for my district. and. Um, do we have an opportunity, even though they're on the list to remove, do we have an opportunity to try to petition to keep them on the list for the report to come back to council? Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh, OK, perfect. Thank you. So perhaps Councillor Purdy could indicate which which are the two reports that she would like to have come off of this list. Uh, yeah, report number 70 and 71. So 70 is dealing with fireworks. Um, uh, and, and actually there, there seems to be two motions for the fireworks one and the one that I feel is important to my district is the second one um, on that uh, motion list. And then uh, report number 71 is the pest uh, control, the rebate, the pilot program rebate uh, for rodent control. Um, those were the two that I would like to see come off. So 70 and 71, is there any comments from staff on those? It's really council's discretion if they wish to have the report or not. Understood, but is there anything that might be missed as to why they're on this list to begin with It's all? Shannon's there. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, through you uh, to the councillor. Uh, I just would give a brief update that we've been working away on the integrated pest management plan for the better part of a year um, and it's nearing completion and there's different specific management plans for certain pests within that. Um, it also contemplates the potential reduction of the um, pesticide bylaw and then more recently it was um, uh, that I think council included the rat rebate motion as part of that. So it's kind of a three part, very large report that is in its kind of final draft stages right now. So I just wanted to let you know that. OK, thank you. OK, so. Um, the motion uh, with the out with the. Um, with the additions of council is now in the chat line. Um, while we look at that, I'll go to Councillor Smith. Yeah, super quick. We're we're still working off the attachment one that's on the report that we received in our package, right? So there was a email sent last night with a okay. spreadsheet with the added items. Uh, it was sent yesterday evening around five o'clock. So that is the one that we built this list and this motion off of was that circulated spreadsheet. Uh, okay. The motion that I have put forward removes the items that are either have been or are coming to council today. So those ones have been removed from the list that was circulated because those are already on your agenda or have been already. OK, great. Thanks. OK, so we didn't really resolve the issue of the process. Councillor Hensley wanted to go through each one. Other councillors have indicated that they um, that there's been enough time to do this and to make additions. So 
Um, I, I guess my inclination would be to say that we will just deal with those that councillors bring up as opposed to identifying each of them individually. Anybody can request information on any report. I don't know that just saying the title is going to provide uh, much more edification. So um, that would be my view. So let's look at, at, so that's the recommendation that I'm going to follow. Um, and if you look at the report now, and this has been moved by Councillor Cleary, seconded by Councillor Mason, that uh, 1, 2B, 16, 23, 37, 55, 61, 67, 70, 71, 80, 96, 98, 104, and 105. Uh, those along with, um, okay, 70 and 71 are already on there from Councillor Purdy. I think Councillor Purdy's asking that they be removed from this list so that they would continue to be outstanding. Mr. Mayor, may I have clarification on something here? Yeah. Yeah, who's yeah. that? It's Becky, uh, Councillor Ken. I'm just wondering if I can have some clarification on something because I feel like we've just got, well, answer if I can first. Uh, Are you good to go for me to speak? Um, I, I'm going to go to, uh, I, there's a lot of clarifications. I'm going to go to Councillor Smith first and then uh, if it's an issue of clarification, Councillor Smith. It, so, so you already went to me, but I, I, I'll do a point of order because I'm, I'm confused on what we're actually working off of. Are we working off of uh, the list that that is keeping uh, reports on or are we working on on the list that what we already have removed and we want to remove those so they stay on the list? So I, I, I'm not exactly sure what we're working off of right now because with Councilor Ken's question, she wants to take them off so it still is outstanding, but I'm looking at attachment and it's those are what that are already on there. So I'm not exactly sure what we're working off and how we're doing it. Let, let's just make sure we're all working off this understanding. John or Ian or, or somebody sure. please. So Mr. Mayor, in, in the meeting chat, you will see a list of the of the numbered reports um, that are proposed would no longer be required from staff. So these are these are the reports that have been brought forward by members of council having read the staff report dated October 26 and members of council have recommended that those numbered reports no longer be required. Council Purdy has asked that in fact um, items 70 and 71 um, would come off of the list that's in the meeting chat in which case they would still be required to be prepared by staff and come forward in the normal course. Okay, so the items that are on the list are reports that are no longer required. Councillor Purdy is asking that 70 and 71 be maintained. Mr. Mayor, I need to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, just a sec, Becky. I'm just going to make sure there's other clarifications here. Uh, okay, speak, question. There's a lot of names here. Councillor Kent, go ahead. Please. Thank you. I'm having uh, technical problems. I, I am unsure of the list that you just rhymed off a few minutes ago with all those numbers i have i'm i as well as councillor um smith i i'm struggling with where we're at because i'm use, losing technical uh ability to keep track of all of this um i okay it's something there it's, uh, something's just come back i see paul is that from paul russell that is that the list the one that came from councillor russell and uh I want to clarify as well what Councillor Purdy was suggesting. Well, I guess we'll do it throughout around the the pest control. I'm I've lost track of that, so I'm just I want to alert you to the fact that I have I'm having technical issues and I don't feel like I'm going to have a good opportunity here until we resolve it on this discussion. So the, the list that Councillor Russell put on, I think, is the same list that the clerk put on, which I can't see. It is the same list. Uh, there was the full motion that was pasted earlier in the chat and I just took the list of reports that would be removed um, and just pasted that those numbers in the in the chat. So without the rest of the body of the motion that says let's remove these reports from the list of outstanding reports. So as I understand it, we're starting with a full list of reports 
and the discussion will be started around this list of numbers that uh, that I've pasted into the chat. Right, which are the same ones as the ones that Ian put in. Correct. Right. So, um, the original motion, colleagues, was that we continue these reports. Councillors took some off and have added to that since. John, correct? Correct. Council, council uh, started with a with I think three or four. I don't remember exact numbers. And councillors have now proposed these additional, and that is the list. Um, and so at this point, you know, basically, Mayor, it's up to you as to how you want to um, run these run these numbers. Either leave them on or take them off. This is every report that council mem members of council have recommended is no longer be re no longer be required. Those are the ones from the, that are in Ian's chat line, right? Correct, and I've re I resubmitted it in the chat line. So we're going to lose the chat line because there's so many speakers. That's one of the issues that we have. So right. uh, I would encourage everybody to make a note of those items that are being recommended to come off this list, which is one. And Mr. Mayor, if everyone has had a chance, that email was from April. Uh, around five o'clock yesterday and it has three attachments and uh, one of those attachments has all of those numbers the report titles who requested them and and kind of the motion inside as well so if people want to take a minute just to pull up their email uh, from april uh, and actually way is i think forwarded again so uh, you can check your email and there's more detail in that email i should also say mr mayor just um, you know perhaps our clerks could make sure this information comes to us in a more timely manner because uh, I think that's leading to a lot of the confusion we're, we're having this, this morning. Yeah, we didn't have this list for the agenda review yesterday. So um, that list from April, that does not include the ones that were um, taken off in council, right? In November, right. The, November the 20th. So you have to add the ones from council, which are... Uh, which... Um, Anyway, the ones from, that were on the original recommendation, which I've lost myself now. So to that list, you would add one, two, is that 2B or 2? 2B. Oh, just two, okay, so part is number two, right, okay. Okay, so the, the list that we're working off right now, colleagues, is 1, 2B, 61, 75, plus all these ones that are uh, identified in the email that Councilor Mason has just resent. Okay, now, so if you have more, now's the time to, to do that. So just in terms of um, Councilor Purdy's motion is that 70 and 71 should come off that list. I'm just going to look for concurrence uh, on that. If we need to have a debate on those, then we can have a debate. But if councillors feel strongly enough about it, um, we can um, we can discuss them. So let's just deal with the two of Councillor Purdy. Councillor Councillor uh, Russell on on, uh, on Councillor Purdy's motion. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, address the issue of silent fireworks. And one of the things that we hear a lot about is that fireworks are loud and, and they're, they um, have an impact of, of uh, scaring pets and, and awakening family members and all of that. And that's unfortunate. The, what this motion implies is that there is such a thing as silent fireworks. And there quite simply isn't. Fireworks are going to make noise. There can be quieter fireworks, but there, but silent fireworks um, is something that people would like to see, but it simply doesn't exist. And that's why I don't think we need a report on silent fireworks. Hey, Councillor Kent on, okay, on 70. So 70 is the, 
silent fireworks. Well, Mr. Mayor, since I moved it, I should speak to it. Yeah, I've got, uh, I see you on the list. I'll go to you, Councillor Hensby, and I don't know if anybody else is on number 70. Councillor Hensby on 70. Well, Mr. Mayor, again, process, I think it'd be simpler. We start up one and this went through the list on or off. We wouldn't have happen through it by now. In regards to silent fireworks, silent fireworks is just a just, just on that point, though, we would not be through it. We'd still be on the first one. No, we wouldn't. We'd be gone already. It's off so the list already. I think this proves it. Go ahead. Anyway, so, silent fireworks is just a terminology of quieter fireworks is all it is, you know, and, and, and also it's also related to the other report about retail and family fireworks and stuff. So I think the two could have been combined. There's a several reports in here that can be combined and I can report those later. But uh, the silent fireworks is it's just an issue. It's just a terminology of quieter fireworks, you know, less explosive, uh, you know, not 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 as doesn't have to be as high level or low level. It depends what it is. Let's get the information. In fact, I got an email this week from Barcelona, Spain, asking for the status of our report because they're looking at the same issues over there uh, in regards to type of uh, fireworks explosiveness and stuff and the problems that people are having with, with the noises and animals and everything else. So I think it's timely that we leave it on there and combine it with the with the other report. Uh, I believe it's number 10. The other fire report was. Uh, I think they're, they're related. I think they should be combined together as, as the same report. So uh, I like to request to stay on. She is supporting Councillor Purdy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say I I from the feedback I've been getting from my district, fireworks are a real problem, um, and they it seems to be like this summer it was every night and even uh, on new year's eve it started around 5 30 and went until about 1 a.m even later and it's really disturbing to people so i think even the perception of us you know staff doing a report of recommendation it shows that we are doing something to try to address this problem for people who are really really struggling with this and even with their pets it's very just dis um disturbing to see your pets just so terrified so um i i just really would like to petition that we keep it on for the recommendation of staff to come back to council so then we can make our decision with the recommendation that staff has thank you thank you councillor uh, cleary on 70. thank you mr mayor and just very briefly i i agree that um, the motion speaks specifically to civic events and community groups but it does send a signal if we are looking at trying to make firework displays uh, less loud. I agree with Councillor Russell that they're never going to be silent, but if they're less loud, that is of benefit to the people attending and the, and the neighbors who live near the firework displays, but also sends a clear message to residents who are consistently going out and, and often flag flagrantly uh, disturbing their neighborhoods uh, when they set off fireworks. So I think this is a first step, frankly, in going down that road. So I want to see this report uh, as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. I don't see uh, anybody, anybody else on 70. I see Councilor Hensby is saying 70 and 100 should be combined. Let's deal with them perhaps one at a time. I don't argue that there's not a similarity. But on 70 then, do we need to have a vote on this, uh, John or Ian, to uh, decide what we do with this? So, Mayor, I think, you know, at this point, if, if there's a clear consensus that something should come off the list, that's one thing. Failing which... Um, where it's part of the motion now in front of council, I would suggest we simply break it out at the end and vote on it separately as to whether it comes off or not. Mr. Mayor, if I may, Councillor Cleary. Go ahead, Councillor. To John's point though, uh, I think that just gets us into the same pickle we were at the beginning. We're gonna have a list of numbers and people are gonna have to remember what they are. Uh, I would suggest as the chair, if we just, if we do them one at a time, so let's just maybe have a voice vote. We're in committee of the whole uh, sure. and say 70, 70 stays or 70 goes uh, might be the quick, quickest way to do it. Yeah. Start off with number one, go through. We can do that. And then um, if it's not clear, we can do a voice vote, right? So, so in order for that, let's pretend we're in the chambers and we're doing a committee of the whole vote. So is there anybody else on 70 before we do a, so the question is, Councillor Purdy wants 70 to um, stay on the list. It was proposed to be taken off. 
So those who support Councillor Purdy's decision or, or uh, request, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so 70 um, stays. Comes off that list of uh, requests. Correct. 71, um, Councillor Purdy has asked that it uh, come off that list and uh, stay as a report. Is there any discussion on 71? Councillor Kent? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I absolutely want that one to remain. Um, I have uh, lived in, uh, near the water, obviously, since I came from Shelburne many, many years ago. And I understand that rats are a, pet, are a problem, but but there's no question in my mind that things have, have escalated. Um, for what reasons, we have still need to get information, but consistently and more recently, many, many more folks are coming forward. Some of the other councillors that I'm sharing some uh, information from, from other districts are coming forward as a consequence of some recent conversations that I've had with residents. So there's no question I want that to come forward. And I guess a clarification, um, on process being uh, uh, newer to the processes now. Uh, are there opportunities in the future as well if that one is successful in remaining on the list to add to it or would I come forward with some a newer, another request to, uh, um, to start a, a discussion around further mitigation or further actions that municipality could take or would consider taking? So I'm in I'm favor sure. of it remaining and I'm asking if I can, if there's any opportunity to add to it. So the motion is what the motion is. I think you'd have to come back with other uh, requests for more information. Okay. We, that's can, we can talk offline, Councillor. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, so just to sort of, so let's look at 71 then. Uh, is everybody okay with 71, with Councillor Purdy's request on 71? Uh, those in favor? Agreed. Aye. 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 Agreed. Opposed? Okay. Aye. Opposed? So that's that. That's uh, those stay. Those come off the list of uh, issues to be deleted. So what I am going to do is I have on the list some people to speak. And the the chat line is a little bit uh, congested with comments, but I have Mancini, Mason, Lovelace, Kent, Mancini, Kent, Mason, Lovelace, and Austin. Um, but what I'd like to okay. Okay, I'm seeing hands going up, so let me just go back here. Those are the names I see on the list. Um, oh, and then we get the list. Ah, see, there you go. The list goes a lot further than my screen had. So, but what I'm going to propose is that we do go through these items that are on the list at this point in time and vote on them, and then I'll go to the general list. Okay, so. Um, just trying to look at where the list begins and ends, folks. 1022 clarification. Uh, Councillor Mancini. Councillor Kent. Councillor Mason. Councillor Lovelace. Councillor Austin. Councillor Blackburn and Cuttle. Just talking to myself, folks, just to mute yourselves while we try to figure this list. Blackburn, Cuttle. Uh, Councillor Austin is suggesting what I just said. That's good. Councillor Russell was 70. Councillor Kent, Purdy. I'm sorry, I missed some people on 71 because of the chat line. Okay, all right. So I have Councillor Mancini, Kent, Mason, Lovelace, Austin, Blackburn, Cuddle. Um, but let's go to the beginning of, does everybody have the list that was sent out last night by uh, April that's been re-forwarded by Councillor Mason and others? Can we work off that list? Is that the one starting with number 10? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what I propose to do is I'll mention each, each uh, item. Um, these have been requests 
from councillors. If anybody, and then we'll have debate on each one if we need to. If you're, if you don't have, if if, it, if you agree with what, with what is being proposed that it, um, come off the list. Um, you don't need to speak to it um, unless there's opposition. So number ten. Councillor Russell's proposing, and that is uh, award organics management and processing RFP. Is there Mayor, number number ten and number twelve have already been removed because they've gone to committee or council. Yeah, they're already That's gone. Already. Yeah, twelve was on today's uh, agenda. What's that, Councillor Messier? Uh, number twelve is actually on our council agenda today. And sixty-five too. So, so Mayor Savage, what I've done is I've removed the items that are already on the agenda or have already gone to council. So the ones that are in the motion will be the ones that that are up for a conversation of what we're moving because they're not already they haven't already been dealt with or discussed previously. Okay, so ten and twelve were on today's agenda. That's why they're that's why they're shaded on this original list from from April. Uh, either on today's agenda or it went on December 1st. Okay, so Councillor, the first one then is 16. Councillor Cleary, um, on the, uh, we talk about that if it's an in-camera item. Is there any questions on number 16? Well, yeah, Councillor Hensley. So if we take it off, that means we still have dialogue with our other community partners and stakeholders like Dalhousie and everything else. That's all right. occurs. Yes. Thank you. Okay, on 16, is everybody in favor of that being on the list? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. 23. From Councillor uh, Russell, the Cogswell Redevelopment uh, Program, Timelines and Construction uh, Planning. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye, aye. please. Aye. aye. We still have a chat line if you want to speak to the issue. Who, who, who's trying to speak? Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Austin. We've just voted on it. I was just wondering. I mean, I don't. I was just wondering if we act, if we need this or not, right? Like, I don't have the 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 background to say. Well, do, is this it, where how this is tied into the other Cogswell stuff that's coming forward? Is is this something that is still needed or is it gone? I was kind of hoping that Councillor Mason might have spoke to it. Well, and 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 that's what I'm on the speakers list to discuss to say we need to take it off. Uh, <laughs> if I may speak, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just want to be sensitive to the fact that it's a uh, an issue that. Is not necessarily all going to be discussed in public. That's all. But I go ahead, Councillor Mason. Well, are we talking about? If we're talking about, I, I may have lost the thread there. If we're talking about number twenty-three. Yes. 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 Yeah. So there's two lots under construction on Cogswell right now: the old church site at Brunswick Cogswell North west side and the dynamics building on the northwest side of Gottage and Cogswell and both of them are going to have to reinstate the street and presumably we want them to reinstate the street in the way that we envision in the plan not in the way that was done in 1967 so this report is actually more timely than ever and it needs to stay we shouldn't remove it at all and work is being done by staff in this right now so I, I talk to uh, Peter Duncan about this probably every week Okay, so with that explanation, Councillor Russell, would you withdraw that one? I'm fine withdrawing that one. Yes. John, am I or Ian? Am I okay to just take that off the list that way? Councillor Cleary would second that if that needs to be an amendment. We're treating them as friendly amendments. I think we're good. Okay, so 23 will come off this list. Stay on the list of reports. Uh, I think we voted on that 37. Councillor Austin, um, surplus property in Martins Park. Councillor Austin, do you want to just say a quick word on that? 
It, 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 it can most definitely go. Mr. Mayor, I've talked to the staff about that one. The Canal Commission is no longer interested in that property. So the I might come back in future with a, a new motion on that because it's now our property to figure out what we're going to do with it. Okay. Everybody's okay with that one? Agreed. All in favor. Let's go for it. Let's say all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Clerk's office is keeping track of these. 55, Councillor Russell, restriction of animal acts for entertainment. Councillor Russell on that. Thank you. This is uh, simply the same thing that I saw when it first came out. This looks like this is a report to um, prohibit one type of act and allow all sorts of others and the all sorts of other acts are listed. And I just saw the feasibility of providing a report to prohibit one type of act and, and have such a broad title for it. Uh, didn't make a whole lot of, uh, I, I couldn't wrap my head around it. And so that's simply why I've asked it for it to be removed. Thank you. Let's uh, go to Councillor Cleary who brought that forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I did bring this forward and it's, um, so there's a whole history to this and this uh, deals with um, animal acts in our facilities or facilities that we own. So for example, uh, there had been in previous years a bull riding event uh, at the Metro Center or Scotia Center. Um, and so, you know, there are lots of really good reasons, if we recall the original discussion around this, why we would not want to, as a municipality, participate in the harm of animals for our own personal entertainment. And so um, other types of activities are seen obviously as less harmful to the animals. In fact, many racehorses, dogs, et cetera, are treated quite well, as opposed to the way a bull is treated uh, cinching up for a bull ride, for example. And so uh, it is relatively restrictive, and that was the purpose of it, because we didn't want to cancel you know, a dog show um, that might be happening, uh, parading around your whatever breed uh, as an animal act for human entertainment, which it is. Um, however, it is uh, seen obviously as less harmful. And in fact, you know, I, I know lots of dogs that enjoy that kind of stuff. Uh, agility uh, training and that sort of thing. We're not banning any of those things. We're not looking to. This is a staff report looking at these types of animal acts for entertainment in our facilities. That was pretty restrictive and that was the discussion. So it was intentionally so. So anyway, that's my pitch to keep it on and, and get a staff report on it because it is an important issue uh, for human rights, animal rights, uh, for uh, ethics in our municipality. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Councillor Hensby on that? Well, Mr. Mayor, this goes back in our early days of amalgamation of banning uh, circuses with elephant acts. You know, it's something that it just uh, gets an evolution. I guess if Spain gets rid of their bullfighting, I guess we can get rid of the bull riding. Okay. Um, Councillor Russell, your thoughts on that? They are unchanged. This is uh, an act, uh, sorry, this is a report that is looking to ban a whole series of things based on one type of activity. If the report is simply to ban bull riding, let's have a report on banning bull riding. If And if the report is to allow banning of acts, uh, animal acts of entertainment, then great, let's have that. But I don't think this report is asking for what the intent of it is. So I will be voting to keep this on the list of reports to be removed. Okay, we're going to have a vote on this one, colleagues. Uh, I'll do a voice vote. Councilor Hensley, no. Yeah, one further question, sir. In regards to the agricultural shows and stuff, you know, what happens if they're going to have a uh, calf roping or sheep herding or whatever it is to be or, or or you know those are other activities that are associated with the agricultural industry so you know bull riding and breaking horses and stuff you know they're, they're, they're kind of similar so i i concur with councillor russell i'd rather keep the report on the line instead of getting rid of it no he's saying take it off he's saying leave it on uh, take it off uh, take it off the list is what he's saying right my feeling is let's not proceed with the report. That's what I'm going to be voting. 
Yeah, remind people that we're, we're arguing in the negative in support of a positive or vice versa. Count Councilor Daigle Gammon. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I, I'm curious because we do have um, in the rural section where we have our exhibitions and I'm wondering about activities in the exhibition parks and what the impact may be um, if this report is not uh, going forward. So I think that I would like to see it remain um, as a, a report that we require, please. Okay. Just keep in mind that this is a report only, right? So that we, we can make decisions when the reports come back. Councillor yes. uh, Mason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you, you know, just to, to reiterate, uh, it's talking about bull riding uh, specifically because that was an issue. Let's have the staff report come back so we get the answers. But it does specifically say that the restriction would not prohibit. And then there's a list of agricultural affairs, exhibitions, pet shows, horses, all the things that uh, potentially would be impacted in rural are excluded from this report. So uh, I will support the report going ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Leary. Actually, Councillor Mason just said what I was going to say, so I'm good. Thank you. Okay, so Councillor Russell is suggesting it go on the list, which means it no longer be an active report going forward. So on Councillor Russell's motion, those in support say aye. 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 No. Oh. Those opposed? Aye. aye. Yes. In my opinion, the nays have it. In the House of Commons, we had voice votes, which usually led to uh, roll call votes, but here I think that was decisive enough. So um, 55 comes off this list, stays on uh, the other list. 61, Russell and Cleary, Community Stadium Site Selection and Contribution Agreement. Councillor uh, Russell and or Cleary on that one? Uh, thank you for me. Uh, the stadium, I think, is not going to be moving forward. So having a report come back with sele site selection for it, I think, is an exercise that doesn't need to be done. Full stop. Councillor Cleary? Yeah, I would echo that. Uh, if, if and when this group or some other group comes forward, which is unlikely to happen in the very near future, um, you know, a, a, a council, whether it's this one or some future one, can deal with it at that time. I, I think, you know, for the time being, uh, there's there's no point in this. And, you know, I, I feel biased, obviously, against this because I voted not to have this report in the first place and voted against the stadium. But um, regardless of that, uh, I just don't see a need to have staff even have this on their agenda, whether they're working on it actively or not. All right. Any other discussion on that? Ready for the question? Those in favor of uh, that motion of Councillor Russell and Cleary? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, 55. 61, uh, sorry, that was 61. Uh, 67 is the feasibility of sobering centers and managed alcohol programs. Hmm. Councillor Russell. I've changed my opinion on this one. I'm comfortable if this remains as a staff report. Okay, good. good All right. Good job, so Russell. Look at you. It's a tie, Mr. Mayor. Pardon me? It's his tie, Mr. Mayor. He came to his senses because of a new tie. Yeah. A tie. I thought you said it was a, the vote was a tie. Yeah. Uh, I have been known to tie one on. <laughs> Councillor Blackburn, did you speak to wish to still wish to speak to that? It's been withdrawn from this list. Uh, no, just uh, happy to uh, to hear that uh, that we will be moving forward with this because uh, I see this report as being crucial to the work that we're doing at the Board of Police Commissioners. So uh, thank you, and looking forward to seeing this report come to council. Good. Okay. Number 70 we've dealt with, 71 we've dealt with, 75 is not on the list. It went to TSC. Councillor, oh, I think that's a pun. All right, Councillor Cleary, number 80, temporary installation of tactical bike lanes and active transportation routes. Councillor Cleary. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I, I moved this motion last year uh, when COVID uh, came to us and we were in the middle of a provincial shutdown and we were trying to give people as much space for active transportation as possible. And while this report didn't come back and we didn't have some, you know, in, in many ways, temporary bike lanes, uh, we did have our staff respond in an admirable fashion, both um, on, on council's wishes, but also working in partnership with our business development uh, districts, with um, uh, you know our main street associations, looking at how they could make it safer to move around, make business function, make people get around safely. We did the slow streets. Uh, there were lots of great things we did. And so uh, I, in talking to our staff about this, I know there's gonna be some things coming forward in the budget and I know that we are, and bike advocates will tell you, uh, and pedestrian advocates will tell you, we're, we're getting behind in the permanent installation of a lot of this infrastructure. And so given where we are, what we know about COVID now and how we've been responding to it, I would much rather see our staff turn their attention to the installation of the permanent infrastructure and get that going because they've been doing a great job responding to the temporary stuff already. So I'm happy to put this forward for removal. removal. All right, anybody else on that one? All the facts on that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's done. And uh, I fully agree with you on that, Councillor Cleary. The staff have done some cool stuff. All right, 96, Councillor Cleary, Blue Mountain Birch Cove Regional Wilderness Park Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I, told, I was with uh, Councillor Zarowski when he was thinking of this and putting it forward, and we, of course, endorsed it and moved forward. I can't remember if this was number two, three, or four of his motions on Blue Mountain Birch Cove all in a row at uh, successive council <laughs> meetings, but we were certainly on a big uh, Blue Mountain Birch Cove uh, uh, um, uh, streak for a while there at council, which was awesome. But I think this one is premature just because we... In order to have this kind of committee, we need to be thinking about um, uh, what the park is, what the boundaries are. Council in one of those motions actually said back to staff, the boundaries aren't what we want them to be. We want you to expand them. And so I think there's still a lot of legwork that needs to happen before we can even consider putting together a coordinating committee to think about a park when our staff need to come back with more information about what the park is gonna be and look like. So that was my rationale for that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I appreciate where Councillor Clary is coming from. Uh, we certainly had a, a pile of uh, Blue Mountain Birch Cove come through. Uh, I, I don't think we should remove it, though. Um, we, we do have some challenges out there in terms of, uh, I, I would go so far as to say, trust with the uh, community. Um, and I think it was epitomized, Mr. Mayor, you would well know, because I know you were uh, particularly annoyed about how we almost lost the nurture trust uh, piece as that um, was very slow to come to council. And I know it was your councilor Zerowski's intervention that uh, really made that possible. I think uh, removing this one at this time would send a poor message. It would seem like we had, uh, we were backing out of something we just passed a few months ago. But I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. I think there is latitude um, here. I think I, I, what I'm hoping is that our staff can take um, the collection of motions that are out there and uh, whether they get addressed in one report or at stage. I mean, I think uh, Council Chair is right. There are some challenges here as to how this all works out, but I don't think we should remove that at this time. I think we would actually be sending the, the wrong message on this uh, at this time, especially to where we have some new councillors that are trying to get up to speed in that area. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. Um, so yeah, what he said. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do think that 96 needs to stay on the list. Uh, we have a great opportunity here to work with partners in the community. We know that um, people are on the trails, they're out there in the wilderness using it. We have no monitoring plan right now. We need to establish something with our partners. Um, and certainly I would like to see the stay on the list. It would, uh, as uh, Councillor Austin just said, um, set a, a, a negative tone if we remove this from the list. We do need to have conversations and to move forward um, in determining what these decisions will be, and we cannot do that uh, if we don't work in coordination with the partners on the ground. So thank you, Mr. Chair, for this uh, move forward as staff. 
Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Cuddle, did you mean 96 as opposed to 98 or? Councillor Cuddle? Here we go. Um, I, I wish to speak to both Mr. Mayor, but I believe uh, Way is uh, before me here on the list of yeah. for 96. Okay, yeah, no, I saw 98 and I thought maybe you meant 96. I'll come back to you on 96. Councillor uh, Mason? So in my district, District 7, we have the Point Pleasant Park Advisory Committee and I've been on council for eight years and I've gotten to know the other uh, park committees as well. And I'm going to throw out a, uh, a new idea just to kind of socialize it. I'm not going to do anything about it today. And, and either way, we can still talk about this, whether we keep this or not. But I think we actually need a regional parks committee because practically what I see is uh, the amount of work that comes before these committees is not sufficient to maintain interest of the volunteers and that that it's really hard for these committees to function properly. We've gone to Point Pleasant Park meeting every two months instead of every month and uh, uh, it would be probably useful to have uh, a broader uh, consultation and and advice on the big strategic issues uh, and and uh, you know uh, combine all these committees in, into one where legally possible recognizing that in some cases things like the Shubenacadie Canal Commission is there by statute and it goes outside of HRM all the way to Maitland so that's not something you could talk about there but just wanted to float that idea I think that uh, you know I'm going to make a motion on that in the future uh, because practically I just think I think these smaller community based committees start off gangbusters and then very quickly run out of things to do and then it's very hard to maintain that committee's kind of uh, uh, culture and effectiveness. So so I'm not convinced this is the right thing to do for Blue Mountain Birch Cove, but we can leave the report if we must uh, and have that discussion at a later date. But you know, that's been my experience. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cuddle, uh, sorry, Councillor Hensby, you're just making a point. Uh, you think they should be combined. These are uh, reports that already exist. I don't think we can combine them at this point. Councilor Hensby, anything? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, they're both about uh, you know, Blue Mountain Birch Cove, so I don't see what the difference is. One is about an advisory committee. I, I totally agree with what Wade's saying about a regional park uh, committee strategy. It's a great idea to go that route. Uh, talk about the, the boundaries and stuff. I, I think the two reports are similar in nature, the same property, same issue, same topic. I think I'm just trying to try to simplify the process by putting things together. Thank you. Councillor Cuttle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I agree that we need this report as well. And a, a big part of it is um, looking at what our priorities are as council over the next four years. And um, on that list is working with community groups and stakeholders to involve and engage people in more meaningful ways. So I think forming a committee at this point where there is a lot of energy and a lot of opportunity to provide advice to collaborate, to coordinate, to provide information to each other is, is a good idea. And should the nature of that work change over time, then perhaps the nature of the committee can change over time as well, just as you know, um, with the Point Pleasant Park one, you've gone from monthly meetings to meet every other month. Um, you know, I, I think committees have that flexibility to adapt and change. But right now, this is there is a lot of energy and a lot of goodwill from volunteers and, and community groups to see this project happen. And um, I do think this is a good idea. Um, Councillor Hensby, I, I haven't had a look um, at how the 83 and 96 might be combined, but if it has to do with Birch Lakes, that you know, maybe that's a possibility. But I definitely think we need to make sure that we have a, a committee that involves stakeholders um, to help move projects like this forward. Thank you, Councillor Stoddard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in connection with the Birch Cove Blue Mountain project, I think it's important to include this on our list to go ahead for a report. I know that it's very important in my district that Rails to Trails and the other um, trail groups, it's very important to them and the community to have this um, uh, wilderness reserve available. Uh, I do know that some of the volunteers, even though they are enthusiastic, a lot of them are burning out because they've been looking 
after these trails for a long time. So I think it's important that it stay on the list and possible, possibly forming a, a committee of advisors maybe just to um, make sure that the meetings go ahead and that we, uh, the council approves and is in, included in the procedures that go on. So I'd like to see the report stay on the list. Stay on the okay. list. <laughs> okay, so Councillor uh, Russell, uh, sorry, Councillor uh, Cleary has uh, put this forward to um, go on the list, which means the report would not go forward. So we're going to have a vote on that. So all those in, is everybody clear on the question? Mm -hmm. No. Councillor Cuddle? So that if it's on this list and it stays on this list, that means it's no longer going to be a report request going forward. So if you want to get rid of it as a report request, vote for it here. If you want to keep it as a report request, uh, defeat the motion of Councillor Cleary. Everybody clear? Those in favor of Councillor Cleary? Aye. Those opposed? <laughs> Come hey. on, Austin. Get with the bird, Austin. Come on. Pay attention. <laughs> um, okay, so that will continue to be a report. It means it will not be on this list. 96. 98 is alternatives to renewing land leases with the province. Councillor Cleary, do you want to speak to that? Uh, so very briefly, this was one that Councillor Adams put on uh, very recently, and uh, it was more of a reaction to a stance that the province was taking with regard to negotiations. And um, I'm not even sure that he felt it would be beneficial. And we reluctantly voted for it because uh, he was on his way out the door. Um, and so the idea of um, looking at uh, land leases with the province related to parks and recreation, unless such leases are to be renewed at no more than a dollar. Well, there's lots of land that we get from them and they get from us and that we share that you you can't put a price tag on it until after you negotiate. So I just don't see it as being fruitful. And it was one of those things where even he admitted it was like, well, I just wanted to send a message to the province. Well, we actually are still councillors here and we still need to negotiate with the province. So uh, that, that was my rationale for putting it on the list. Thank you. Councillor Cuttle on this one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, well, when I, it is a staff report and it is looking at land leases with the province. Um, you know, I can't speak to District 11 that there, are, there we have several instances where there is provincial land that has recreational facilities on them that HRM operates or maintains. In some cases, those leases are up and there's questions about who continues to maintain the facilities. Um, you know, I have a I have a ball field in Sambro, for example, that is kind of stuck betwixt in between, where the the lease hasn't been renewed, and and um, there are questions about who's responsible for that, the maintenance and upgrades to that ball field. Which I have a I have a few of them that are um, you know people are calling me about right now. So I do think that we need a staff report that does look at our land leases. And, and the cost of them, particularly when they are providing recreational, you know, um, opportunities for for communities within our municipality. Uh, so I don't know what's going to come back with this uh, with this report. I'm 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 not sure about the one dollar per annum price tag on that if that's feasible or not feasible, but I do think we need to look at this issue and come up with some solutions. Thank you. Councillor Kent on this one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I too want to see it, it it remain. You know, we we have in each of our districts probably have a number of situations where this could apply. I think that the report, at least I hope that the report would identify the lease uh, situations for if not each individual district have an opportunity for us to at least ask and speak to it. I think the message that Councillor Adams was putting forward is a fair one in um, in that we we have ongoing challenges with our relations with the province where it's a one sided kind of um, 
uh, heavy, heavier handed position from the province that we kind of have to just live with all the time. Yes, Councillor Clary is absolutely right. Relationship building and having good, strong relationships are important at the municipal at, for the province and, and the municipality. But um, certainly from the very limited time that I'm getting a sense of where we're at with some of these conversations, traffic calming is just an, a, a perfect example, I think, uh, where we've positioned ourselves with the province to make changes. Um, that, you know, not a lot has happened in this province in relation to uh, a dialogue with the province during COVID. And I think that's a symptom of a possible future position that they might be able to sort of stick with for a while. So I'm not, I would really like to have information so we we can uh, deliberately look at where we sit with these leases um, and many other issues that we're faced with in our dialogue with the with the province. So I would very much like to see it remain. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Morris. Yes, thank you. Um, I also have run into um, quite a few issues in my district uh, related to a lack of clarity over provincial land leases. And one example is around Kearney Lake. Uh, there's been a traditional hiking area at uh, Kearney Lake and there were some concerns from the province about liability and people were um, prevented from going back on those very popular hiking trails for some time last year and it's still not totally sorted out. So um, I feel that we also need some clarity on these pieces. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Morris, your um, camera wasn't on there. I just encourage councillors to make sure that when you're speaking, if you can, the council, that the cameras be on so folks can see. Okay. Councillor, we'll yeah, thank you. Councillor Daigle Gammer on 98. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd also like to see um, the report uh, stay uh, that we needed there, especially I would say as a new counselor, just the, the learning curve and the staff reports are so educational. And then um, if there is a way by district to even understand where are the places where there is provincial land um, and parks and rec. I know we have a, a significant amount of baseball fields in our district, for example. Some of them are on provincial land, but maintained by a community group or HRM. So um, I would really like to be able to see this report come to fruition so that uh, we can understand the issue better. There's also a significant issue around the trails. And I think Councillor Hensby has put that in the track chat as well, that, that rails trails is a, an example to where we need to, to understand this. But, and this, it, it seems very restrictive. So I'd like to see what happens, the impact of that would be in a step report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Getting some background noise there. I'm not sure if it's from you, Councillor. Okay, so um, on the Councillor Cleary is suggesting that uh, 98 be on the list, which means it would no longer be a report. Ready for the question, colleagues? Those in favor of Councillor Cleary's uh, motion, aye. say aye. I'm going to ask people to say aye because I can only see nine people at a time. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. 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 Okay. I think that the uh, nays uh, have it. Okay. So it will no longer be on this list. It will continue to be a report requested by council. Um, Item number 104, requested by Councillor Russell, um, is on the disaster relief request evaluation program. This is something I think that came out of the, uh, the disaster in Lebanon. Uh, Councillor Russell. Thank you very much. Um, it is exactly uh, what came out of the disaster in Lebanon where um, for a century Halifax had uh, been the holder of the title, you know, we've, we've had the largest non-nuclear man-made explosion in the world. Uh, Lebanon uh, had a larger one, and so they now, uh, again, have the largest non-nuclear man-made explosion in the world. And we took an extraordinary measure of sending some relief to them. And this report normalizes that by setting out the criteria of what we do 
when we are assisting uh, other municipalities. And I think if we have a once in a century uh, event, and I hope it's not more often than once in a century, where we are assisting someone that, and it is completely out of our mandate. Um, I don't think we need a report. I don't think we need a process for that. I don't think this is a, a useful, uh, I don't think this is useful for our staff to do at this time. Uh, we have many other things that we are looking at. We have some reports that go back six years and I, I simply think that this one is unnecessary completely. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cleary on this one. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, so this is an interesting one, although it came uh, as part of the motion I brought forward for the Lebanon uh, Red Cross relief. It wasn't actually my motion. This was a staff suggestion. Uh, the CAO wanted uh, uh, this particular part of the report because uh, if ever a request was going to come through again, he wanted to frame it within some criteria with which that council would make the decision within because this was the first time we'd ever done anything like this. And actually to Council Russell's point, probably the last time, if not forever, in a very long time, we'll ever do something like that. Um, so I wasn't really convinced to move it in the first place, but it was actually a staff suggestion to have it, to put parameters around any decision like this in the future. So I'm 50-50 on this one, um, uh, but it was staff advice. So I'll just leave it there for people. Thank you, Councillor Austin. You're muted, Sam. You're muted, Sam. All right, the, uh, I'm having trouble with that mute button today. Uh, I, I'm pretty much in the same headspace as Councillor Clary. Um, I wasn't very, I wasn't, I was pretty lukewarm on this one in the first place where it is, it is, I, I don't think it's something that, that is going to come up um, often, if at all, again. Um, and so I'm not convinced that we necessarily need it. The only question I would have, um, if I could ask the CEO, um, do we have any sense as to how much work might have been done on this already, if anything? Sean? Thank you, Mr. Mary. I just put something in the chat. I'm sure you haven't seen it yet, but uh, at the end of the day, we have looked, we have since looked at this and it's our view uh, at the moment that uh, any, any such request should come back as a one-off because it was Councillor Cleary and Councillor Austin, they're saying um, very difficult to policy in this. Um, you know, every situation will be different, and uh, we've tried to figure out a way to put a wrap policy around it. But we are uh, we're better, I think, to leave it uh, leave it as we have dealt with in the past. Thank you. All right. Well, let's get rid of this one, in my opinion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody okay with us uh, leaving this one on the list and not expecting a further staff report? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, let's go to the last one on the list, which is uh, 105, uh, Councillor Russell, which is in-house towing operations. Uh, Councillor Russell. Thank you very much. Uh, this one stems from um, the idea that uh, we have a number of cars that are illegally uh, parked, especially during winter operations. and it would be more expeditious to have a uh, someone in a tow truck empowered to uh, drive up to the car, write a ticket, tow the car away, um, and they they would effectively be acting as uh, traffic services or, or the police and also a tow truck driver. And I'm not sure that this would be uh, an effective use of of uh, staff time or, or of dollars. I, I think we have a process, although it takes time, it is fairly well understood, although we don't get enough towing done. Uh, and I would like to see more cars ticketed and towed in winter operations so that we have our streets cleared because that is the single biggest challenge that our plows face. I don't think that this type of operation is something that the municipality should undertake. That is uh, simply what I was looking for. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I actually would like to leave this on there. There's a reason the Halvax uh, Bridge Commission has bought their own tow truck. 
because we have a bit of a market failure right now with towing, especially late at night and in busy periods and in snowstorms. Uh, you know, I, I would like to know if there's a case for this for for HRM, especially for the late night towing uh, and for uh, some of the other problem areas that we've identified. Uh, practically, you know, the peninsula has probably some of the highest issues with narrow streets and towing in winter and with uh, stuff during uh, business Monday to Friday. And, uh, you know, with the bike lane or the bus lanes coming in or the, the, the no parking on Hollow Street, for example, inbound in the morning. And it's just really hard to get uh, uh, a uh, tow truck uh, to respond uh, unless it's been planned as some kind of major operation well in advance. And, and those are usually blitzes not rather than one offs. So uh, I would like to keep this on the list and have it come back for a report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Uh, so ditto to what Councillor Mason said and, and to Councillor Russell's concern about a tow truck driver being sort of judge, jury and execution or when it comes to parking infractions, uh, I believe and I think staff can confirm this, but you have to be at least a CO1, so that's a compliance officer level one in order to write a ticket or a police officer to write a ticket and get a car towed. Uh, you can't just willy nilly run around the city and move stuff. So it actually has to be approved by the person who would normally be doing the approving even for a private tow truck. And so uh, I, I agree. Uh, I'd like to see the staff report come back as uh, the councillor responsible for a good chunk of Quinpool Road and uh, Councillor Mason has a good chunk of it as well, uh, we see regularly uh, issues with snow removal, with traffic congestion uh, in the winter. And so, and actually all, all year round on a lot of our streets, whether it's Quinpool, Gottagen, Spring Garden, uh, and there's often just not enough tow trucks around to come to problem areas, especially in the winter, because they're already dealing with other problem areas. And so uh, this is not to do it. This is to get a, a staff report to look at a business case for it and we would make a decision. But I think given where we are with our winter operations and where we want to be, there's a gap there. And this would be one way of potentially filling that gap. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hensley on 105. Uh, very much, Mr. Mayor. In regards to the Bridge Commission, uh, yes, we did we did bring an in-house service. We we thought as an emergency that to get the vehicles off the bridge as quickly as possible, we get them off the bridge and do an approach, and then another tow company can deal with it there. We don't take them to a compound or nothing. We just we just clear the bridge. That's our first priority. Uh, in regards to street issues, in regards to snow plowing operations or leaf clearing, what the case may be, um, I think we have a more of a problem with our tow truck contracts than we actually do with an in-house uh, solution. So if you ask me, if this stays on, I think we need to reevaluate our, our our towing contracts in regards to how it's being um, handed out or reviewed or, or the capacity of the preferred vendor. Uh, I think that we need possibly need uh, several vendors to be available and just do on a rotation list. ABC, who can get there first or, or be Ruggles or be uh, Ace or be uh, Academy, whoever the case may be. But uh, I think that if this stays on. I think the report should just be more than just in-house uh, towing truck. I think we need to evaluate our whole towing contract altogether. Thank you, Councillor Russell. Quickly to close. No, uh, thank you. If it is an evaluation of the uh, current towing services, I, I actually think that would be out of scope of of what this report has. One of the things that we do have to consider is what happens with the cars that get towed, um, and where is the service. Uh, apportioned and and if we have a distributed mechanism as we have now with the uh, traffic services all over the place and and the towing companies all over the place and the lots all over the place where the where the tow trucks take the cars um, you know one of the challenges that we are going to have is when a tow truck takes a car it can't just take it somewhere else it has to take it to a particular place and one of the suggestions that has come up uh, the reason I mentioned that is one of the suggestions that has come up is somebody has said just move, tow it to a different street and that will not fly. The towing companies have the space available to do it. Uh, I would like to see them build the capacity if they don't have it and if there is a problem with the towing companies let's make sure that we have enough capacity in those companies. The bottom line is I think that government should do what only government can do and nothing else and I don't think this is something that only government can do Therefore, I don't think we should do it. Thank you. Thank you.
I see Councillor Hensby's suggestion to be taken to a park and ride and boot it. I'm not sure what Councillor Blackburn might think of that. Uh, all right, colleagues, <laughs> we, uh, the motion is from Councillor Russell that this item be added to the list, which means it ceases to be a report. Ready for the question, those in support of Councillor Russell's motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those in opposition? Nay. Aye. Aye. Sounds like Out a firm. So I'm going to take that that the nays uh, have it. Um, OK, so uh, we have some items now. Colleagues, those are the ones that were submitted. Um, I have some speakers on the list from before, which is about three and a half feet above where my screen goes. So the names that I have to speak generally on this now are Mancini, Mason, Lovelace, Austin, Blackburn and Cuddle. Have I missed anybody on the main list? If I have, I just ask you to put your name in the chat. Councilor Mancini? I'm good now, Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, all covered. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Austin's come off the main list. Councilor Mason is off the main list. Uh, Councilor Hensby's talking about combining. I don't know that we have the power to combine these reports, John, in any event. Uh, I would think that these are all reports that came out of Council and would have to be uh, dealt with individually. John, would that not be correct? Or Ian? So yes, I would I would agree with your assertion. Uh, these are motions moved in council, and that is how I would see it as well. Councillor Lovelace, back. Councillor right. Lovelace. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a comment uh, for staff, and I wonder if in the future, when we are reviewing uh, these reports for removal. Um, or uh, to keep on the list, um, to continue working on them. If we could have a sense of the progress that's been spent already on them. Um, obviously, we, you know, um, closing out a, re a report, uh, remo removing it from the list uh, for staff to work on when it's 75 or 85% done, uh, seems like an awful loss, a loss, uh, an opportunity lost, really. Um, because staff reports provide so much information to us um, and that we that are uh, in the way that we do our business. So I just wonder if in the future we could have that uh, consideration from staff. Thank you. We'll put that uh, forward as a recommendation, Councillor, unless somebody wants to speak to it now. All right. Um, thank you, Councillor Lovelace. Councillor Blackburn. No, for your, no further need to speak, sir. Councillor Cuttle. I, I don't need to speak anymore either. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor uh, Hensby. Well, Mr. Mayor, in regards to, you know, combining a couple, I think is appropriate. Two of them are about public engagement and two of them about elections. And I think that can be done with the same report or perhaps uh, they should be done in, in coincidence of one another or, you know, it, it's just that there's similar in nature that should be done. And there's other reports in here I think should be deleted from the list. For instance, uh, number number 65, that's going to be dealt with the, on, on the council agenda. You know, that's, that's the bylaw for the inadequate water supply for septic systems. That's on the agenda next for, to be dealt with. So. That's almost done and complete, so that that was going to come off the list because it's hopefully be passed today. So, any comments from staff on sixty-five? Okay, as they're dealt with, obviously they'll come off the list of outstanding reports. And also in regards to, can I get an update on number 62? I thought the inclusion of the St. Patrick's Rectory as a heritage, uh, I thought that was done by now. I know they corrected the issue of the church registry that had the wrong address and then they're supposed to correct the, the, the inclusion of the rectory building itself. Is there anybody that can speak to that? Uh, Mr. Mayor, shock. Uh, I think we'd have to get back to the councillor offline on that on that on that question. Okay. okay, I don't see any of the people on the list. 
So let's just make sure we understand which motions passed and which ones didn't. Ian, um, I know we all have, I got pieces of paper with what's been on and what isn't. Um, can you just sort of uh, let us see what the actual motion now will look like? Probably the same for you in terms of trying to keep up with each item. So I've just put into the chat. Uh, the chat has removed the items that were removed by a conversation in the committee, the whole meeting today. Uh, the ones that are left are numbers 1, 2B, 16, 37, 61, 80, and 104. Bingo. Mr. Mayor. Councilor Hensman. Also with number 84, I believe that we also have an information report in regards to Halifax uh, 2050. Um, does that need to stay on? Because we have that as an attached agenda already. It's an information item. And number 87, I don't think we're going to be sending anybody to uh, any uh, conference yet until this COVID uh, pandemic is over. So I think the, 21, tw the 2021 Glasgow Scotland should probably deferred or taken off anyways. I don't think we're going to be sending any money anywhere. Didn't we deal with that one already at council? No, nope, it's on the list here. It was dealt with at council, I believe, Mayor, you're right. I think it was. So do we remove 87 then? I think 87 can be removed for sure. So moved. So as it has already been handled, I don't know if we have to add it to this motion. It would just come off the list because it's already been dealt with. Correct. Okay. And there's a number and 84 because we already have the report. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Um. Also, number 91 can also come off, but that's also the agenda, too. Yeah, these will come off as they are uh, dealt with the council for sure. Be dealt with today. Mr. Mayor, it's Councillor Clear. Would you like me to read the amended motion uh, so we can vote on it, or are we just assuming we all know it? We have. Um, we have uh, a motion on the floor. So Ian, what do we have to do here? So right now, considering those conversations earlier as friendly amendments, the motion that I put into the chat uh, would be considered on the floor and it, it'd be no issue to read it into the record and have it for the people viewing online. Okay. So um, these are friendly amendments there. It'll be rec recorded in the record of the meeting. Um, 1, 2, B, 16, 37, 61, 80, 104. Anybody? So I think that's fine. Anybody else? Call for the question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just a uh, question. Sorry, I couldn't type into the chat quick enough there. Um, I just wanted to clarify uh, to Councillor Hensby's point. I mean, 84 is a reoccurring ongoing reporting. Um, that's not coming off, right? We didn't consider that as a friendly removal, did we? No. Okay. Thank you. For that very reason. OK, so that motion is on the floor. Are we ready for the question, colleagues? Question. Question. We have to vote, uh, Ian, by uh, we decided the committee of the whole. We're still we're voting in recorded votes, right? Yeah, we will go through the roll call if that's good. So beginning with District 1, Councillor Daigle Gammon. Voting in favor of the motion. District 2, Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Three, Councillor Kent. In favor. Four, Councillor Purdy. In favor of the motion. Five, Councillor Austin. In favor. Six, Councillor Mancini. In favor of the motion. Seven, Councillor Mason. For the motion. Eight, Councillor Smith. Four. Nine, Councillor Cleary. Yes. Ten, Councillor Morse. Yes. In favor of the motion. District 11, Councillor Cuddle. In favor of the motion. 12, Councillor Stoddard. In favor of the motion. 
13, Councillor Lovelace. In favor of the motion. 14, Councillor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. 15, Councillor Russell. In favor. 16, Deputy Mayor Oathit. Yes. 17, or sorry, Mayor, Mayor Savage. Uh, yes. That passes. Okay, colleagues. Um, thank you very much. So just as I, we're going to, we're going to go to our next session. We'll begin before lunch. We will take a break at 12 though, for people who need to get, get lunch and stuff. Um, but we will move with the adjournment of this meeting into our uh, next part of the meeting, which is going to be uh, conducted by Chair of Audit and Finance, Councillor uh, Russell. All right. And Mayor Savage, just to confirm, everybody please remain in this meeting. We will not be going to another meeting invitation until after the break at noon. Thank you. Okay, okay. so motion, we're going to adjourn from Council Committee of the Whole and uh, resume it. Well, I guess we're still in a special Committee of the Whole. So um, stay in this meeting and I'll hand the floor over to Councillor uh, uh, Russell. And just to make it formal, I uh, will move to adjourn from the Special Committee of the Whole. I'll second. Thank you. And I would like to call to order the Special Budget Committee meeting. And I'm just going to uh, bring up my list here. Um, so we have the minutes of December 15th, 2020. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of December 15th, please? I so Council. move it, Lisa. Second, Councilor Cleary. Super, thank you. Any discussion on that? Okay, um, all in favor of that motion? Aye. Please signify. Aye. Thank you. All opposed? Thank you. Uh, call for a declaration of conflicts of interest. And not hearing any. Okay, thank you. Uh, we had a public participation uh, session set up and uh, normally we would go through the public participation speakers list. However, for today's budget uh, meeting, no speaker signed up by the deadline. Um, as a reminder to those watching from home, in order to have signed up as a speaker, the deadline was 4.30 p.m. the business day prior to the meeting, so that would have been yesterday. Uh, we have two items on the agenda, the strategic priorities plan and the capital uh, budget advance tenders. Considering we're gonna be breaking in 20 minutes and uh, the strategic priorities plan starts with a staff report that will take upwards of a half an hour I'm wondering if it would make sense to proceed with the capital budget advance tenders uh, or if there are any complications with doing that. Do I hear any concerns? I have no objection with that approach uh, in regards to that. I'm sorry, you have no objection? Exactly. Okay, and are there any concerns from staff? You no, know, Mr. Chair, uh, if Council, if this Council wish to proceed that way, then that would be, we have no objection. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so at this point, I'd like to proceed with item six, the 2021-22 capital budget advance tenders. Uh, you should have received a report about this on December 18th that has a recommendation at the bottom of it. And can I get someone to uh, Move that uh, motion, please. Mr. Chair, I'll gladly move that the uh, Budget Committee recommend Regional Council approve the Schedule 2122 Advanced Tender Projects as per attachment one of the staff report dated December 18, 2020. Thank you. And can I get a seconder, please? Second, Councillor Mason. Thank you. And over to staff for any any comments. Mr. Chair, uh, the, the advanced capital process is a long-standing process here. This is really to try to get uh, to the marketplace uh, what we intend to tender this in the coming year. So this is really an opportunity for us to be a little more nimble in terms of the awards, uh, to give a, give a second chance to start preparing bid packages, bid responses, so that when, once the capital budget is approved, 
by council, then uh, these can be awarded in the normal course by council. So nothing will be done. Uh, this is simply a process matter. It's a way to try to fast track our capital spend this year. And it's probably more important this year in terms of COVID, trying to get to the contract in a more, more effective way uh, going forward. So well, nothing will get approved necessarily or awarded until the capital budget is approved by council and then awards will be then uh, aid in accordance with procurement policy. I don't know if Jane uh, Pryor or Jane Fraser would make any comment on this. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Dubay. So, uh, simply just to restate that um, what this does is it allows us to be able to get out to uh, to tender much much more quickly than if we wait until the uh, the finalization of the uh, of the budget, um, which is now uh, projected to be uh, towards the third week of April. So, by um, getting things for street work, for vehicle purchases, it really allows us to move forward on initiatives that council has um, uh, has asked us to uh, to move forward with that. Um, um, and as the CAO has said, uh, the tenders will not be awarded um, to uh, to vendors until such time as that budget is, is passed. And uh, it's also a good uh, uh, when we signal the amount of work that's going to be done to uh, to industry. It also gives them some comfort as to what it is that they can expect and allows them to uh, to maintain their, their crews and uh, and sort of gauge the, uh, the work levels. So that once again, that has a very positive impact on our ability to, uh, to get to market and to get the work done. OK, thank you very much. Um, and for discussion, uh, let's start off with uh, Councillor Mason. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so I'd ask staff, uh, I guess, Jane, could you comment on, uh, for the new folks, how the uh, advance tender requests play with stuff that was approved already in previous fiscal years that maybe is held over? Because, you know, there are some things there like uh, regional center, AAA bike lanes and, and a couple other bits and pieces where I'm pretty sure the actual budget is much larger that that we would be acting on. But but I think that since we have seven new councillors, that some clarity about how past and current uh, approvals play together might be in order. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to uh, to the councillor. So we have on the capital plan um, projects that we refer to as either bundles or discrete projects. So the bundles are a group of is a group of funding that um, traditionally we have in the budget every year. So you'll see that on street recap. You'll see it for some active transportation. You'll see it on on vehicles. Um, and this is this is normal ongoing work. Uh, so what we do tend to do. Um, because certainly on street recap where the season is very short or on things like bus purchases, fire apparatus, where there is a very long lead time, we look at those um, those assets and we see um, you know, which ones we need to put out to tender. There are some projects that are carried over um, year to year uh, and have been approved either on previous capital budgets that would be a phased um, project. Uh, they would get uh, included on that list if it's moving into a second phase where there has been funding uh, to, to go forward. We are, as, as the CIO said, we are still um, crashing the, the capital budget um, to, to, to see where we're going to end up. Um, so that's why it's important to understand that that these projects um, are not finalized until, until the budget is. Uh, so there are a number of puts and takes. Uh, these are the projects that either um, traditionally would go forward or ones that um, are already linked to uh, to an initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, just a quick question. I don't know if we have any specific departmental staff here or if staff can sort of assure me of something, but uh, there's two items on the advanced tender list. Um, for bus replacements, uh, well, bus is so. There's the conventional bus replacement, and then there's the moving forward together plan, new bus purchases. And as we know, uh, we're spending um, in the order of you know 24-ish million dollars here, 25 million dollars. Uh, <clears throat> can we be assured, uh, especially with the conventional bus replacement, because these will be diesel buses? that we're buying the absolute least number possible 
um, that we're only replacing what absolutely must be replaced because we also have several initiatives running parallel to this, and that is one looking at hydrogen as a possibility, and the other one, which we're much more committed to, is the electrification of the bus fleet. And of course, we know we can't do that until we have the charging equipment, we have renovated and expanded our uh, bus garages. And so there's steps that have to be taken that we're aware of, um, and, and it seems, you know, I, I'm, I'm speaking for many, I think, when I say we'd like this to be moving faster than it currently is. But can we be assured that we are buying the absolute least number possible? Because both of these categories are 100% going to the advanced tenders, whereas many other categories, things like tactical urbanism, for example, is only having 43% of the full budget putting put to advanced tender. Um, and, and uh, you know, so one could look at this and say, well, you know, when it comes to dirty buses, we're buying 100 percent of them. When it comes to making our roads safer, really cheap, we're only doing 43 percent of that in the advanced tender. So can you just provide some assurance that we are going to be as thrifty as possible when it comes to buying diesel buses? Mr. Rigi, good answer, Alvin. Mr. Chair, David Rigi is on the on the call. Good, uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Dave Rigi, Executive Director, Halifax Transit. Uh, through you to the committee. Uh, yes, I, I can provide that assurance uh, that Councillor Cleary has mentioned. Um, when we go through the state of the fleet, we've actually cut back uh, from the. Uh, uh, in terms of the number of replacements back to the uh, the bare minimum that have to be replaced in order to maintain uh, the you know the the effectiveness and the reliability of the service and then the moving forward together plan buses are are to to make sure we can do uh, year four of the moving forward together plan implementation uh, this year as planned so we have taken that approach of um, if the buses can last another year or two we'll we'll do so and replacing those that that have to go. I very much appreciate that, Mr. Rigi. And um, so just to follow up, so for the Moving Forward Together plan, uh, your the bus purchases that you have here, uh, that will 100% fulfill the last year of that plan? Uh, no, th there are two years left. So this is the second last year, yeah, 2021 and then 2022 would final. It would be the finishing uh, of the plan. And in your estimation, just from where you sit right now, uh, would it be about the same number of buses purchased again next year, or is it a smaller number for next year? Next year is a smaller number, yes, than, than okay. this year. Awesome. I appreciate that information. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Lovelace. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so as a new councillor, this is my first time reviewing uh, this documentation, uh, which I appreciate. Um, I, I'm A couple of things I just want to point out. A few of the budgets are um, the tender requests are coming at 100% of the budget. So a, few, a number of these items are, are pulling fully 100% uh, of the available budget uh, for these items. Um, so I just wanted to point that out um, so that it, it's clear. Like, but at the same time, it's not clear because there's so very little information that's actually provided um, in this document. So, you know, for example, I know my residents are going to say, oh, hey, where are we in this? Um, I couldn't tell you uh, because there is no clarification as far as where these projects are actually located. Um, some of them, yes, there is uh, indication that it's in uh, Dartmouth Commons, for example. Um, but what I'm, I'm, I'm just going to use the same uh, point that I brought up earlier uh, in regards to the reports. Like, I just would like to see a little bit more information and clarification, especially for new councillors who are coming on board to look at these documents, make a, a very important decision. Um, and noting, of course, that this is 71% uh, of the capital budget. Um, that we're about to uh, make a decision on. So uh, I, moving forward, would appreciate having more clarification and more detail on these items. And, and I, I know that staff are well aware of where these uh, projects are located, uh, just as a as a one point. Um, and so I just think having that project deliverables, a little bit more information uh, would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If if I may. This is 71% of the money that is allocated in these line items. It is not 71% of the entire budget. Oh, no. 
Well, I understand that. I'm saying within the, these line by budget okay. items. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And over to uh, staff, over to Ms. Fraser, if they're for anything else. Is it possible? Uh uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to uh, to the committee. So as part of the capital budget um, process, what you will receive is a rather thick book that details every project that we have on the capital plan um, with details there. And we will be giving that to you in advance of when we come to debate the full capital um, budget. Uh, so, so you'll have that. And this is one of those rare times when we're actually going to give you a, a physical hard copy. That way you can make your notes on the papers, you can get your questions, and then you can see where, where everything is. So there is um, a, quite a bit of detail. I do appreciate that it is hard um, to really understand uh, what, uh, what it is that you're being asked for um, with this. I know that certainly um, the executive directors have a good sense of knowledge of, of, of the project. So if there's any specific questions, we can certainly address those for you, uh, Councillor. Yes, no, I, I would raise the point, the West Bedford Park and Ride, for example, um, the information that's even available to the public is very limited on the website. Don't know what the design is, don't know what it looks like. There's there's just hasn't been any detail on that. While uh, I know that residents District 13, 16, they would like to see this move forward, um, but also we would like to have a bit more information clarification moving, moving ahead. So thank you, Jane, I appreciate it. I look forward to the big book. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hensby. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, similar to uh, Councillor Lovelace, you know, a few of these projects in this list are quite specific. You know, you talk about the Metro West Park and Ride long overdue. Um, we got the Sheet Harbor Recreation Center. We got um, the Timberley facility, the Lakeside, the Lakeside Community Center there, there in Fort Needham. They're quite specific what they're for, but the other ones are kind of generic. So, like, and, and as, uh, uh, as Jane Frazier mentioned, we'll be getting a more detailed list, and I'm just hoping that you know we we approve this envelope of money for those generic uh, project uh, titles, and hopefully we'll get that list ASAP because uh, there are certain projects I'd love to see advanced, uh, and I'd like to know what they are, where they are at. Uh, like for instance, I'm curious about the provincial road subdivision paving, which ones we're going to be targeting this year. Uh, finalizing and stuff so um so i'm prepared to move forward with this at the present time and look forward to the greater detail as it becomes available and uh, hopefully we'll get this tender stuff out the door to to make the best advantage of this construction season ahead of us because i don't know what's going to happen with covid we're not don't know if we're going to be shutting down the economy or again let's let's get out in advance of it and get as much done as we can uh Thank you. Hopefully there will be more than five people allowed on a construction site. Um, over to uh, staff for a response. No, there's no thank you. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. So one one question, I, I don't see a specific project on this list, which doesn't mean it's not happening, but I know that in the recast budget, we did put the Halifax North Library uh, in there for different different uh, aspects um, in terms of capital. So I'm just wondering, because I see Dartmouth North in there, I'm wondering if Halifax North is still, or still planning with that work, or has it been delayed or, or will be tender in a later date? And Ms. Fraser, or is uh, someone from the library staff? So, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I can I can address that that question for Councillor Smith at, at a high level. So, the projects that are on the advanced list, it, it really depends on their state of readiness. So, it's whether or not they're ready to go to tender. Um, as it stands now, we do have those um, those projects on on the list as are remaining, um, but we do not have. Um, we haven't we haven't finished the work on on the capital budget. Well, another thing that council will receive as part of the the package will be uh, a reconciliation of the projects that were listed last year on the budget list. So they would have been the ones scheduled for 21-22, mapped against what we're recommending for 21-22 this year. So you can see all of all of the reconciliation um, on that. 
Great. So really, so, so, you know, I had my specific question on the Halifax North, but really it was just around if we don't see it on this list, um, there's a chance that we'll see an update with coming into budget. So that, that kind of answered the broader question that I had. So that, that's it for me. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Purdy. Thank you. Um, I actually was just curious with the fleet and bus replacements, what happens to those vehicles? Are they sold or auctioned off for profit? Does, can money come back into uh, the budget from those used vehicles? Thank you. And Mr. Rigi or Ms. Fraser? Um, I can take that as uh, Mr. Chair through you to, to the Councillor. So as part of the procurement um, policy, we do have a disposal of surplus assets. So once a business unit determines that an asset is surplus, um, we do go to auction to, to try and, and uh, sell them. Uh, we do also donate some of the assets. It really depends on the um, how much useful life they have left in them. Um, when it comes uh, specifically to the buses, I'm sure uh, Mr. Rega can can speak to uh, to what we see happens uh, with buses as well as as the ferries. Sure. So through the chair to the committee, um, specific to buses, um, when they go to scrap, they, they go for very little value, um, maybe $5,000 a piece. There's not a lot of uh, scrap value left in them. So um, what we have been doing in, in, in past years is uh, to to offer to uh, you know some municipalities, other smaller municipalities may buy them. Um, not for profits may buy them. Uh, so certainly we're happy, you know, to and that, that that does come to council for decision. But to forego that very very small scrap value, um, if they can hold more value for another organization. Okay, thank you, Councillor Purdy. Does that uh, address it? Super. Uh, yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Morse. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just I had a question regarding the um, the parks budget. It seems extremely low and I'm, I'm just looking for clarification, I guess. Um, uh, when we see this in the capital budget, does that mean that there is not much money being set aside for possible parkland acquisition or am I reading that wrong? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you to the committee, Denise Belfield, Executive Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, Den Den um, uh, so Denise, I, I, we are having, we were having a bit of a difficulty hearing you. Can you hear me now? We can hear you a little bit better, yes. Okay. Um, so as the CFO mentioned, these are just a couple of the parks accounts. So the parkland acquisition count isn't actually in the advanced capital tender because it's it's not a tender process. These are the projects, as as was mentioned, in order to get the tenders out the door, in order to try and get better prices, or in the case of some things such as playground, there's a very long lead time in order to get equipment, playground equipment. So these accounts are to cover those things. In the bigger capital budget document that you'll see, that's where some of the other parkland accounts are. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, thank Councillor you. Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just have a question for staff. Um, I can appreciate for all, for everyone, especially where it's your first budget. I mean, the budgeting process is the most complicated thing that HRM does. Um, the, it's my understanding the advanced tender list is. Uh, I mean, these are all still subject to budget approval. I mean, it's a it's a bag. Uh, a lot of these are bag buckets. But um, the tenders are they're put out. They have the caveat that it's subject to budget approval. And so, you know, if in the budget process we, as we look under the hood at the capital, at uh, the capital council does have us. If there was something that was a deal breaker on one of these, council does have a second opportunity. Is that correct? Over to Ms. Fraser or the CAO. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, yes, uh, through to the councillor, that is correct. The final decision on what projects go forward always rests with the um, uh, with with council. Um, you know, the, in the bundled accounts, there tends to be a bit more certainty around that. For example, on on the streets and and roads, um, 
I would never bring forward a capital budget that did not have some funding for repaving in it. So there is a bit of certainty depending on, on what the bundle is. Thank you for that, uh, Jane. I, I appreciate it. So, I mean, I, do, I guess just for all the new counselors, I mean, the main point here is that these are the, a lot of these bundles, we don't know what's in the detail for them, but we're going to get that detail. And today, if there was something in there that was like, whoa, whoa, what are we doing here? This is not this is this is not your you're not signing a blank check away today. As I understand it, and I might be mistaken, uh, there will be a motion coming back to council this afternoon where we are ratifying the decision that we made this morning. But so, but I think the point, uh, Mr. Chair, is that this is still subject to our actual budget approval. This is so that we can get the tenders moving and be ready. True. Yes. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a couple of questions. Um, uh, line item that specifies new paving subdivisions, provincial roads. Just to, so I understand, is this is this uh, gravel roads? I had a great meeting with um, Dave Hubley and staff around helping me understand <laughs> uh, the the process here and know what's coming forward. So is is that considered for provincial roads? Uh, sorry, is that gravel roads? And over to Steph, do we have uh, Mr. Anguish or Mr. Hubley? Uh, yes, uh, good morning, Council, or actually now good afternoon. Uh, Brad Anguish, Executive Director of Transportation and Public Works. That does refer to gravel roads. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, the, um, some of the detail around those line items that say other road related works, uh, road operations and construction, state of good repair, um, roads, uh, road safety improvements. So my understanding from working with or listening and engaging with Dave Hubley and his staff was that that the, the state of good repair or maintaining what we have is clearly the priority versus um, new roads for a municipal infrastructure exclusively. Um, so uh, I, I, I do look forward to seeing the, the detail that comes forward on that. Um, because I, I don't want us to have a priority of, of addressing provincial roads before our municipal roads. Uh, so the another question is not as so much a question, but I just want to point out something because um, Mr. Rigi, you had mentioned around scrapping of buses, and it's been a long time since I've been on council to understand what the process is for people to actually re be in receipt or 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 buy purchase these buses and then what do they do with them i had a very difficult situation in my constituency when i was on council from 2004 to 2007 where scrap buses were scrapped uh, sold to a, a property owner and then that property owner chose to do all the demolition or the reconstruct deconstruction of of literally scrapping the bus in a, in a land use environment that was not um allowable and it was quite a quite a a, 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 a journey for uh, dealing with it so i just want to make sure that if if not today maybe another day i can have confirmation around the the processes to make sure unintended consequences don't happen when these buses are scrapped so i'll just leave it there whether or not you want to come is fine but or we can leave it for an off offline conversation okay and I'm wondering if Steph has a comment on that. Uh, th through, the, through the chair of the committee, I, um, I think probably yeah, an offline conversation uh, about something that, that I, I couldn't really comment on that at this point in time. OK, thank you. Uh, over to Councillor Cuddle. I have a very delayed mute button today. Thank you, Councillor Russell. Um, yeah, my, my question it has a little bit to do with what Sam was saying around kind of what we're approving here and the purpose of it. But my question has to do with what kind of comes later. So I'm wondering that if we approve this now, does what are the implications for funding of other projects down the way. So if we're funding things here for 
does that have implications on finding additional funding for things that we might find um, might see as a different priority down the road? Um, one of the things I'm, I'm asking about is particularly interested in um, would be the funding put aside for um, road safety. And kind of going through this list, I, I can see that road safety issues are in several different buckets here. We have like tactical urbanism, street recapitalization, sidewalk renewal, road safety, part of the moving forward together plan, um, and active transit. Um, though when I read in the project list for like moving forward together, it talks about um, buses and upgrades to um, on street improvements for things like accessibility. But in the chart we see that it only says vehicles 100%. So I'm just I'm just wondering if when I look at this list of projects and I look at the percentage that's allocated now in pre approval, what implications does pre approving some things to 100% and some things that only like um, you know, road safety at 55%. Is there opportunity down the road to increase the road safety budget? And Ms. Fraser or the CAO? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Wade, uh, Jane wades in. Um, Council is in full control of the budget process, including the capital budget. So, Jane mentioned earlier, uh, you'll be getting a budget book. That's quite voluminous and has a lot of detail around each and every capital project that we uh, were proposing to, to deliver on this year. So there's ample opportunity, I would, I would say, that uh, for the council to change whatever it wishes to change on the capital budget. All this, all this list represents really is is a, a is, you know, are projects that are ready to go to tender. You know, we're, we're comfortable as an organization that these projects are are, are ready to go. Uh, should council actually approve them, right? Because you'll get to, you only get to you'll get to approve all of these projects on if you're in the capital budget debate, the latter part of February. And we have two days set aside the latter part of February for budget for capital budget, and at that point you'll be uh, waiting in on a very on all the great detail that we have for you in terms of all of those projects. So that's that's your opportunity, Jane. Uh, thank you, Shock. No, I don't have anything to to add to that. That's exactly what I would have uh, said. OK, great. thank you. And I, and I greatly appreciate the clarification and sorry if we're asking question the same question in 10 different ways, but just 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 making sure. Thank you so much. OK, thank you. And Councillor Purdy. <laughs> I might be asking the same question. I just for clarification and um, Patty, you, you, you touched on this with your question, but I'm just I'm trying to understand how and you might have answered it uh, with the readiness to, to go to tender. But is that how the percentage of the budget is prioritized? The, um, because some of these are 13% of the budget, some of these are 100% like like has been said. So I'm just wondering how how does that percentage of the budget come to be? What what are the what are the criteria to decide that? And over to the CAO or Ms. Fraser. Well, thank you. Thank you for the question. And look, I appreciate all these questions because it's helpful for us as well to understand and help help you understand our processes. It is a complicated. We have a complicated budget process here at HRM. We're a billion dollar company and a lot of moving parts. So don't be worried about asking questions. We're, we look forward to your questions. I think it can help you in your decision making. So what we have here on our capital on our capital spend is council set certain parameters and Jane will speak to this in more detail. Council has set certain parameters around investing capital budget in the state of good repair, say at 70 percent and 30 percent on 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 new Johnny stuff, right? So in other words, you know, council has decided that it wants to focus uh, a certain percentage of the budget on state of good repair, which is replacing roofs and capping streets and those kinds of things, uh, parks and playgrounds, maintaining our buildings, all that, right? And then there's another bundle of money that's set aside notionally uh, for uh, new and Johnny stuff. 
that's generally around 30% of the budget. So in those two buckets, uh, we work and we have the you know prior decision of council and all of that that's all factored into this. So we are at a point today where we're coming to you and saying of all of these of the of the state of good repair and the state and the and the new projects and all the projects that are within those, these are the ones that are ready. So the, there was no sort of we didn't actually sort of say, you know, 40 percent of of streets should should go now or whatever. We, we said, what are we ready to do now? Right. What's has all the design been done? Has all the due diligence been done? And it, it, of those is ready to go. So we can actually put those out into the marketplace to allow the private sector to get ready so we can hit the ground running in the spring with with projects. Right. So, so, so it's, it's that sort of approach that we use here. And on that, I'll turn it over to Jane. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shock. Just to expand on that a, a little bit. So there is quite an evaluation process that we go through um, when determining which projects we're going to recommend for, for council. So we look obviously at council priorities. Uh, we look at the state of the asset. We look at whether there are safety issues. Um, state of readiness is, is one. Uh, capacity to, to deliver both from industry, staff, and, and financially. So, so there's a big mix and a big risk uh, framework that, that we go through. Um, to, to come up with the full capital budget that, that you're going to see. And there will be things on that that we recommend on that list that um, you want to see and they are not there. Um, but that's a process that we go through where you ask questions and then um, things can can get shifted to, to Councillor Austin's um, question and, and they can also get added to the, the budget adjustment list as, as well. Um, so for specific for, for advanced uh, capital, the difference between um, the percentages really depends on the asset that's being purchased. For example, moving forward together plan, those are buses, as, as Mr. Reggie's already spoken about, um, and buses have a long lead time um, from the time that we place the order to actually have them delivered. If we did not move forward with the, um, the tender, for uh, the buses under moving forward together, there is a risk that we would not be able to have the buses in time in order to, to meet the deadlines for that initiative. So that's the other lens that, that we look at is, is how critical is that asset to moving forward with an initiative. On things like um, parks and playgrounds, uh, that percentage would be smaller because even though there's a long lead time for setup and for playground equipment, you're not gonna do every single playground at once. So you have time to, to grow into the program, if you will. So really depends on, on what the asset is. Fire apparatus is another one that um, one piece of gear is very expensive and it's a long time to, to get. So you don't have the advantage of only tendering half the truck or half, half the pumper. So those are some of the, the things that go into uh, deciding what goes on on the list and the percentage around it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rote. Um, thank you, Chair. And just uh, today, I think we've heard some really great questions and, and very good answers on why we do this. Uh, the benefit of doing this. And I think we've heard from the new councillors in particular, this need for clarification on this and, and the, the benefits and uh, impact on decisions that will be coming forward. So that sort of dovetails in nicely with the discussion. I know the mayor and I have had a number of discussions and, and with the, uh, the CAO as well, that uh, because the capital project day is now going to be pushed out about a month, it does allow us more time for you to talk to the executive directors, for you to talk to, to Jane, for you to get the answers to these questions. Because in an ideal world, with what comes forward on around February the 23rd now, shouldn't probably be any surprises in there for you. You've met with Parks, you've met with Dave Hubley and TPW. And then, of course, as Jane mentioned, which is great news, we're going to have a nice big thick book that you can go through again. Uh, and have be in time before the meeting to go through this. But just to, to let you know that we are very concerned that there's a lot coming at you here at once. You don't want to have a lot of surprises landing uh, in front of you because we do have to answer questions from the public. But I think you're going to see with this delay and with the book and whatnot, a little bit uh, more on understanding. So anyway, just, just my two cents here that we, we are very aware of this and we are trying to, to help you. We as the organization. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Uh, thank thank you. you, Chair. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, I'm not the mayor yet. Um, and Councillor Daigle-Gammon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
from the conversation, I understand the value of the advanced tender list. And I'm wondering is, is there a metric or a measure that would tell us that by doing this advanced tenders that there is a specific amount of time saving either by HRM staff or that there's a financial savings that there is a metric or a measurement to which to show that the advancing tender list has significant value to the process. And over to Ms. Fraser or the CAO. Mr. Uh, Chair, I would say before Jane weighs in, I would say that thanks for the question. You know, I would say there's a number of categories where if we don't have to have the advanced tender list out in the time when we're proposing, then there's some projects that will have to be deferred out a year uh, because of timing. You know, I think about uh, some fleet acquisition buses, for example, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a whole other, there's a bunch of other things, including discrete projects that could not be delivered on this year as intended and as, as committed to by council in the past and this council's uh, list as well. So. I would I would argue I would put that out there again. Uh, thank you, Shock. I think certainly Mr. Anguish could speak to um, to the real benefit of seeing um, the advanced tender and what that means for for his ability to get the uh, to get the street work out. Um, you know, I think uh, I think the the percentage that's been quoted is about ninety three percent or ninety five percent. Uh, of last year's budget is, has already been tendered, um, which is really important in street work uh, because the season is, is short. But if Ms. Rangwish has has certainly better better metrics and, and evidence to, to speak to, um, be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Jane. Uh, um, um, that's exactly right. Both the CAO and Jane have highlighted. There are are there specific metrics per se. Uh, no, because the only way to understand the benefit is to not do it, um, quite frankly. But the real risks are completion of the projects. So, for instance, bridges. We need the entire construction season and the lead time to get the constructors on board to have the availability of the constructor and have the season to complete the work. Uh, so it goes to availability of construction. It goes to timing uh, of the tender and ability to get it out the door this year. And we do that uh, in road, streets and roads in waves. Um, and so the first wave needs to go out under advanced capital or else we can pretty much assure almost a third of the plan will not get done this year. In other words, the money won't get spent in the year that it's designed to get spent. And of course that now causes you grief within your capital budgeting process. Another big piece of this is utilities. Um, as most of certainly the new councillors have had their initial discussions with with uh, Mr. Hughley and have seen their kind of a, uh, capital candidate lists. Um, what's very important through this process is to make sure that we have the necessary expenditure authority to move forward with the work as we get the utilities on board. That is a big piece. So as we sit here today, we are working very hard to get these candidate projects all lined up with the big utilities, gas, uh, Nova Scotia Power, and with Halifax Water. And as many councillors are aware, the consequences of not getting those lined up now means they are at risk this year. So this is a very critical process. Again, uh, completion being the highest risk, and then price, we know for a fact that uh, while we don't know exactly the premium, we definitely pay a lot more on the back end as we uh, tender towards the end of the season and we're trying to squeeze jobs in. We pay a lot more on the back end than we do up front when, when we're kind of first through the door with the contractors. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have no other speakers, so if there is no other discussion. Question. Call for the question, thank you. Um, and so this is a, uh, a recorded vote. So over to you, Mr. Clerk. Starting in District 2, Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Three, Councillor Kent. Thank you, we can't Kent. hear you. I agree with Patty, this the mute button is let's get ahead of it. Oh, I am in favor. <laughs> District 4, Councillor Purdy. I am in favor. 
five, Councilor Austin. In favor. Six, Mancini. In favor of the motion. Seven, Councilor Mason. For the motion. Eight, Councilor Smith. Four. Nine, Councilor Cleary. Yes. District 10, Councilor Morse. In favor. 11, Councilor Cuddle. In favor. 12, Councilor Stoddard. In favor of the motion. 13, Councilor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councilor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. 15, Councilor Russell. In favor. District 16, Deputy Mayor Oathead. Yes. District 1, Councilor Dagle Gammon. Big in favor of the motion. And Mayor Savage. Yes. And it sounds like the motion passes. And so at this point, it is 25 after 12. Motion, would like to, recess. motion to recess until 20 after 1. Would that be okay? 115. Let's resume at 115 this afternoon. Mr. Yeah. Chair, are we back in this same link? No, we would ask yes. that everyone please go to the afternoon session. Uh, the link in your calendar invitation for the afternoon session is the one you should be joining after lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.